Hi, I'm HC Evan. Have you noticed when you try to pull out like a character or a prop out of crate that has to be up for your own purposes? And then you go to your selection thing to like take a screenshot and whatnot. You throw this into your favorite image editing program like so. You hit your fuzzy select tool in your program and you delete your you delete the edges with an alpha channel. And what you get are these like especially when you use the fuzzy select tool, you get these weird jagged lines that make it not look good and make it look horrible. And stuff. Well, today I'm going to show you how to actually have perfect lines that are not all jagged and preserve the anti-aliasing like you would see if it was done natively. So, what you're gonna want to do is, is you want to start off with a blank slate. You want to like uh, get rid of whatever like, you're doing. I mean, of course, maybe you're doing something else in GIF or whatever. Start off with a blank slate so we can keep this easy. So, with a blank slate, you're gonna want to start create yourself a uh, new thing like a new image or whatever, and like you, you set yourself up a resolution that's big enough to cover up like whichever character you're gonna do. So, let's see here, like, let, let's increase the resolution a bit here. 1280 by 600, excuse me for the burp. Okay, 600, and we're gonna go okay. And now you have like this image. Now this is about the size of the screen, you can really use any resolution you want, but like I pick, but I like to pick one that's similar to the resolution. So you got this resolution going on here. And you're gonna want to look at your picture. You want to see if there's like any like um any weird graphics or whatnot that, that that uses the the color that you're about to use. Now we're gonna cover that up later, but, but and any imperfections later. But but for right now, you want to at least just 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 to be on the safe side to find a find a color that's not on you. So as you can see here, you got like the purples, the blues, the reds, and, but you don't have the greens. So we're gonna actually use a green screen. This technique here is called chroma keying, and there's a way to do it in GIMP. Now, there are other tutorials which show you how to chroma key with the uh, color picking tool, but there's actually a feature in GIMP called color to alpha, and that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use this color to alpha here. So, for right now, you're gonna want to save this as an image. So, we're gonna label this chroma, like, because we're chroma key. We're gonna hit export, and we're gonna hit export. Now, everyone has their way of importing custom props, as you can see here. So, we're gonna do what, what other people do. And while I'm on Linux, this will apply to anyone who's running Mac OS X or Windows. So, right here it says slash home slash Renko slash documents. You can at least have like C colon backslash users backslash Renko. But I don't want to cover that because everyone knows how to import custom props into Walfus if they've been with Walfus long enough. So, we're gonna click Control A, C. We're gonna copy that into Insert Image. And we're gonna press Control V forward slash chroma png import. And now we're gonna go set this to back. So control. And we're gonna go ahead and click edit and send to back. Now that we have our character in front of here, you're gonna want to go ahead and take a picture of that. I, but always remove your UI. That's not just that. So you're gonna click select and you're gonna select your character. character has been selected, and now we have the green thing around it. Now I'm going to slow down talking because I might have been talking pretty fast, So, but pay attention so in case if I do start talking fast. So we're going to start, we're going to close up this view right now, just go change it, and now we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, picture that we've already done. So go to file, go to open, and if I can find it, it should be around here. Oh right, it should be under pictures. So we're gonna go into pictures, we're gonna go double click uh Yeah, wherever the heck I had it stored at. We're gonna go over here. Should be this yeah, there it is. Click open, and here we are. We have all of this. So, as you can see here we got that. When you try to use the color picking tool, you're gonna have the exact same problem. And right now I showed up on a white screen, but that actually shows my point a little better. You see all these little jagged lines of green, and it just makes the image look horrible. So, we're actually going to use a way to, to get rid of that. We're going to have this thing look pretty good. So, you're going to want to, first, you must duplicate this layer. So, now we have two layers of this. And this applies to, like, any object on screen. But right now, we're using Sumireko as the, as the, as, like, the example. 
So now that you have Sumireko on board, you're gonna want to. You know, as I said before, you 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 don't want to normally use this, but um, th this technique actually does kind of involve this fuzzy select tool. So you're gonna want as uh, uh, just like a thing here. So you're gonna click onto the chroma key, like on, onto like well, click onto the green or whichever color you used. Click the green. Then you're gonna want to go to select. And you're gonna want to click uh, grow, which will actually grow the thing by two pixels. You have to set it to two pixels. So click OK, and you're gonna want to add an alpha channel in case it wasn't already added. So that we can have transparency. And we have now deleted it. And as you can see here, we've deleted more than normal, but that's okay. Now go to the rear image. Go to colors, and go to color to alpha. Now, since we've now since we've picked green, we're gonna want to use that color. If you don't know what the color is, you can click here and look here. It says zero zero ff zero zero. And I mean, anyone who's used GIMP long enough would have known how to set the color. You just click here and you play around with the colors. I probably didn't cover that earlier, but now you know. Just play with the colors until it fits something. But I totally recommend that you pick a pure color that's ff something something. So. Green is 00FF00, so we're going to roll with that because we've already been using it. So we're going to go to Colors, we're going to go Color to Alpha, we're going to click this button right here. And we're going to want to just set the set this to 0, set Green to 100%, and set Blue to 0. And here we are. Now here's the reason why we have it set up to where like there's like a top image and a bottom image. Click OK. And as you can see here, we've removed the green. But the side effect of removing the green actually removes the green elsewhere, so it produces like her look looking semi-transparent and semi-purple. We don't want to have semi-purple. So when we when we uh, to redo that, we have actually duplicated the image with the fuzzy select tool, and as you can see here, we have ourselves a transparent background. But here's the main point: when you go to zoom in. The alpha right here, all this, uh, all this stuff here actually matches the outside edges. So you now have perfect anti-aliasing with your props or whatever you're trying to pull out of your create.swf. You can thank me later, but I believe this is going to really cause, it's not really going to cost much, but like, I don't know what's going to cost, but what I'm going to say is, you should do this. Anyone who should do this, I recommend you use this technique here to import your props or like to modify your props so that you can have perfect anti-aliasing without needing to like recreate the prop or the character for in this instance prop character whichever thing you want you can now do that and I, I can go on on and on about like scaling and zooming but for now you can figure that out on your own time to but um just a little tidbit though you could you could at least set it to 50 100 and 200 for custom props but there anyway that is all for now, and thank you for watching if you actually watch this whole thing here. I know this is kind of like my first time actually trying to make a tutorial video, but hey, maybe this will help someone, and I hope it helped you. This is HDF, and I'm signing off. See you around wherever.